So as you can tell, there are quite a lot of use cases and companies that are using Go, but why specifically did they choose Go? I mean, I did mention that Go is especially great for large scale systems and web servers, but why is that the case? That's the case because Go, when it was developed by those Google engineers, was inspired by C++, Java and Python. Since these were the main programming languages Google was using at the time Go was developed. And these engineers simply tried to combine the best pieces of all those programming languages and mix them into a brand new language. They wanted to get the performance of C++, but come up with an easier syntax, a better developer experience and faster compilation times than C++ typically has them. They wanted to take the strict typing that's built into Java and C++ to keep that code safety and avoid unnecessary errors. And they also wanted the simplicity of Python, but have a better performance than Python has it in some uh, bigger projects, potentially at least. Uh, performance there can be worse with Python than with other programming languages. And they also wanted a lot of built-in core features so that Go is ready to use without having to install a bunch of third-party libraries right at the start. But at the same time, they of course still wanted great support for third-party code and third-party libraries. And these were the main goals that these developers uh, followed when they developed Go. And in the end, they achieved those goals. Go is fairly simple has a nice syntax, a lot of built-in developer convenience and support. It has types, it has fast compilation, and it produces programs that also are very scalable and offer great performance. Nonetheless, just as with all programming languages, there still are use cases and scenarios where Go is great, and there are some use cases where better programming languages might exist. For example, Go is awesome for web services and web apps, as I mentioned before, and as I showed with the examples of Uber and Dropbox. And it's also pretty good for task automation, so for scripts or command line programs like Yugo. Now, there might be better alternatives available, though, if we think about building games. If you want to build a game, maybe even a 3D game. You can certainly find a way of doing that with Go, uh, but there might be programming languages that are better suited for that, like C++, or you take a game engine like Unity, which allows you to write your game logic with C Sharp. Other examples could include desktop apps or mobile apps, where Go might not necessarily be the number one language. And that's it for now, though. Now you have at least a general idea of what Go is, how it was developed, which problems it solves, and uh, what its main advantages and use cases are. And now in this course, I'm going to teach you these core basics that you need to know about Go so that you can dig deeper into it and so that you can get started building your own Go programs.